Okay, guys, welcome back to the Hard Stats Champions League semi-finals. We just needed that little break to get these guys set up here, get our order reset a little bit, but we can now get into the class screen for these this first semi-final and see what classes Dale and Alchemist are bringing. We saw them yesterday, but uh, we're also going to get the bands for the two choices as well. Now, for those of you who didn't watch yesterday and haven't watched the group stages as well, the format, you can see there's five decks. It is a best of five for the semi-finals with two bands. The bans are done in rounds, so each player will ban one, the information will be shared, and then they'll be able to reevaluate their lineups and make a second ban. When we get to the grand final, it's going to be best of seven with seven decks and three bans. So we're going to see some really interesting strategy throughout the, the next couple of hours. Wow, three bans. Uh, but still, two bans is a lot. And in most tournaments, you ban only one class. Here you ban two. And um, that allows you for a lot of strategies. You know, you can ban the aggros from the, uh, from your opponent. You can ban the just overall good decks if you don't have a strategy, or maybe ban control. Like um, just looking at those lineups right now, and being Dale, do you ban Shaman because maybe you didn't practice enough against Shaman, or do you go for a trusty hunter and Druid ban? Uh, Warlock ban is a good idea as well for both players. You never know what the other is playing. Have we seen the warlocks from both from both of them? We did see. I, think, uh, I mean. I don't know if we saw the Warlock. I think Alchemic's Warlock was I don't know banned. if we saw the Warlock. Of from Dale, it was banned as well. We've seen from Dale, uh, well, at least yesterday, um, we've seen Warrior and Hunter from Dale. And from Alchemic's, we've seen Shaman, Druid, and Warrior. All right. Um, so looking at the, at the classes right now, the players are thinking about the bands, and um, whoever bands whatever that can be the, the class can be picked. Um, here, hunter for both players a very strong class. J Dale is not playing druid. That's really interesting. Like druid being one of the top classes um, for the lineups, and we've seen um, as mentioned before, Alchemix and Gara taking the series with the druid. Dale doesn't run it. Uh, maybe that's uh, that's because he will uh, always ban the druid. He has his priest, uh, which is also an interesting pick. Like we've seen Amas playing priest, and it, it didn't work that well. But um, Dale has his priest, and it can be a different build. Like it can be a control priest, it can be Defral priest, warrior for both. Uh, more or less standard. We've seen. I believe Alchemix was playing bomb lobbers. I'm not sure if. Um, Definitely Dale's playing Defender of Argus. That's uh, something different about his warrior deck, and that helped him um, yesterday to, to face um, Alchemix right now. So Paladin also... We will have a mix of classes. I would say that Warlock is going to get banned on both sides. Dale might ban Alchemix Druids, and Alchemix can ban the Hunter. And we go got Calum back. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Perfect, perfect. I can't see you, but I can I can hear you. So we do get the first band coming in there. Hunter going to be banned for Dale, and Alchemix is going to uh, get his Warrior banned. That's quite interesting, banning the Warrior. I don't know if I'd maybe go for that as a first ban. I probably would have looked at maybe Hunter or Druid, but uh, Dale just said he doesn't want to face that, that Warrior deck of Alchemix. Yeah, that's definitely an interesting choice because he is running Warrior... Paladin uh, that can that can possibly counter warrior. Maybe he's not confident in the mirror match, and uh, priest also is not that great versus warrior. If Amaz is playing priest versus warrior, that's fine. But maybe really Dale doesn't want to get into that matchup again. Uh, it is a very difficult matchup, and Amaz did a, a lot of choices that were uh, surprising for me personally. Like. I was just looking at the cards and I was like, I don't know what to do here. And he was doing the moves um, and, and executing them perfectly. But then again, uh, Warrior versus Priest is, is awkward and tough to play. So maybe that's the, the reasoning for, for Dale. And um, the Hunter ban for Alchemix is kind of standard. Hunter is a deck that's really tough to counter. Um, also, Dale was playing a, a very uh, interesting build with Cult Master and... Um, Kind of like a custom one with snake traps. Uh, that might be the reason also why Alchemix is banning it. Yeah, it would be. I, I think Hunter is a pretty solid ban. I guess sort of Hunter or Druid really are, are, are pretty good stock bans against any lineup. 
um, an alchemist is probably going to feel pretty happy at getting the hunter banned out here, leaving things like the the shaman and warlock, and actually a fairly aggressive lineup for for alchemist in himself here. That might be also the case why they'll ban the warrior, um, because you do ban the control decks, you leave your opponent with aggro, and you try to counter the aggro with anti-aggro decks like priest, warrior, and paladin. Okay, so we see the warlock of Dale getting banned there, and it's actually going to be a hunter ban on both sides. So the deck, the lineups we are left with are paladin, warrior, and priest for Dale. Certainly a very control-heavy lineup, and the druid, warlock, and shaman. We know the, the the warlock and the shaman are definitely described as aggro, but the druid could certainly be construed as a, an aggro deck as well. Yeah, the druid is the combo druid for for Alchemix. So Alchemix has more or less the combo of the the aggro lineup. We don't know the warlock, I believe. Um, Alchemix is a guy who's mostly playing Zoo, but he is competent enough to play any kind of Warlock. I hope is, this is a Zoo. I would like to see the Zoo from Alchemix. You mentioned before he was playing the um, Scarlet Crusader. Blood Knight Blood version, Knight yeah. Zoo, yeah. And that, that would be really cool to see that. So, But Mabe Dale uh, is actually equipped to counter the aggro decks with his Priest, Paladin, and Warrior. Uh, so I would give an edge uh, to to Dale right now with this lineup with the um, anti aggro controlish lineup. Yeah, I would say upwards. so as well. I would say so. I think the priest does really well against the mech shaman. I think it does pretty well against the zoo. I think warrior if it gets the right draws and can get the armor out of range, then the the mech shaman we saw does kind of run out of steam a little bit, and that paladin can be very reliable as well. I think the key class in this uh, in this lineup is Druid. If Druid is because Druid has an edge versus Warrior, and Druid can have an edge versus Priest with four attack minions and uh and a combo as well. So um a priest is a class that needs to get certain cards to be able to counter the class and if it doesn't versus Druid then Druid has an edge. So the Paladin will be deck a deck that can stop the Druid. Uh, we've seen Dale winning with, against the Druid with the Warrior um before, but still this Druid can free O the lineup. Um if Druid loses then they will definitely will have an, an edge. Okay, so we're going to get into this game now and see what game number one of the first semifinal is going to look like. Heart Stats Champions League Season 1. Semifinals. Dale CZ versus Alchemist. Doomhammer. Okay, so it's going to be the Mech Shaman of Alchemix coming out first, and the uh, the Control Warrior of Dale. And we see the Fiery War Axe and the Cruel Taskmaster in hand for Dale. Um, Doctor Boom not as useful, but that Fiery War Axe is certainly going to be a, a pretty crucial card in the early stages of this matchup. Oh yeah, that's a, a very important card to get versus the Mech decks. But Alchemix's hand is amazing with uh, all the early Mechs, and a, and a great curve with Pilot the Shredder into Lothlip into Fire Elemental. So Alchemix has the cards to start the game, but Dale has the cards to counter them. So right now it will be really interesting to see how the game unfolds. Uh, with Anoyotron getting coined, it actually stops the fireworks. Yeah, that's such a horrible start for the, sh for the Mech Shaman. Uh, if, you're the, if you're Dale here, it's such a horrible start to have to face down because the Anoyotron is actually a card that's really hard to deal with for Warrior. Real easy way to deal with it. I want to talk about that bomb lower coming into hand for Alchemix that real quick there. That's a card which uh, I don't know if that's standard in Mech Shaman, but it's a card that we've seen in a number of Alchemix decks, and clearly he's just a, a big fan of the removal that that offers. Yeah, it's it's certainly a very powerful card. Well, you, for five mana, if you're able to kill something for five mana as well, it's an Azur Drake, maybe opposing Pilot of Shredder, and still get a free free minion on board. That's a lot of value there, especially if uh, in tempo decks, if you're trying to get the tempo. And Alchemix is a guy who's all about the tempo, you know, just building up the boards, continuing with um, with the damage, and then finishing the games with the burst. And that, and that Fiery War X, which if you're a warrior player, you'd be hoping to use on a Mech Warper or something of that ilk. He's going to have to use both charges of it to get rid of this Mech, of this Anoyatron. Yeah, that's certainly painful, uh, seeing this Anoyotron stopping the Fairy War Axe. But you know, I've, I've seen a Trolldance video today when Anoyotron stopped double Deathwing for two turns. So what is a, a small Fairy War Axe against that? This is true. I haven't, quite, I haven't watched this, this, the new episode yet, but uh, I did see Anoyotron on the cover. Um, now, Dale, go ahead and play the Pilot Shredder here. He did get that off the top, and that was a pretty nice pickup for him. Um, 
And it's a difficult card for Alchemist to deal with. Alchemist is going to throw out a Hex here, which against uh, such a top-heavy deck as, a, as a Control Wear, is, uh, it's a risk, but it's a calculated risk, I guess, that he's just thinking, you know, I need to get the damage in and get through and get this out of the way as quickly as possible. And, you know, if it gets to the late game, I guess maybe Alchemist is thinking the Shaman's probably already too, too, too far behind at that point. Yeah, the overall strategy for uh, for the Mech Shaman is that you want to develop the board and get as much damage early as possible. And then you try win, uh, to win the game with Burst. Uh, right now, Alchemix is positioned really well. With Dale not having a turn 5 play, uh, missing the Belcher, uh, they will have a turn 6 play with the Shield Maiden or maybe other combinations of cards. But Alchemix already in, um, in position, like having the tempo plays, uh, playing on car cards on curve, having a very difficult board to deal with, and that low flip is going to stop any possible spells uh, from being played. It's going to have to just be the Shield Maiden here for Dale, but he's still going to take a, a huge amount of damage. Could see the, could see the possibly the bomb lobber here to trade with the the shield maiden and try and get that out of the way. But he's also sitting on the fire elemental, and you might see the fire elemental going in with the the mech warper here to clear and just build up that board even more. Yeah, there's a couple of options. Like you can bomb lobber and also play the um, uh, the free two uh, wind fury minion. How is it called? It's uh... whirling zapomatic. Wooden is automatic. All right, so you, you can, can do you that. Can add, you can actually play both the mechs, and then you can crackle into the five five. And if you're lucky, the it'll crackle will kill it by itself. And if not, then you can trade your mech warper. Yeah, that's also a, a very solid play, and uh, it's also playing around the the brawl. Uh, you are you are getting overloaded a bit, but you will be able to play mm, a low bomb lover or uh, crackle is overload too, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, the screen the screen is a bit small on my side, but um... <laughs> can't quite see it. It's uh, slightly below the hand. But yeah, it looks like he's gonna go and play out these mechs here, and then oh, he's actually just gonna trade. Ignore over. the shield maiden. That's also a, a good play. Uh, he is the one who's really aggressive right now, and it, he did a couple of plays that will um, play around the bro. Even if the if there is a brawl, but there is no brawl for Dale, and Dale is right now in big trouble. Yeah, this feels like I mean, you know, we didn't see the Mech Shaman serve Alchemix too well yesterday. Uh, it, it ran into a, a Mech Mirror match, if you like, against the Mech Mage, and uh, it came out on the losing side of that. But this shows the power of the Mech Shaman. Not the most po the most popular Mech deck, but uh, it does have those same you know principles as the Mech Mage that it can just fill the board so quickly. With really efficient minions, things like the Whirling Zapomatic can really mess you up as well. If Alchemist was to top deck a Flame Tongue Totem or a Rock Biter weapon, if he, if he actually got a Rock Biter here, that Zapomatic by itself would be one off lethal. Yeah, Zapomatic is a card that's really powerful. Um, and a fun fact is that Zapomatic, uh, as a golden card, it has uh, red lightsabers. So it's basically a Sith. And if you don't it's have evil. a golden version, it's a Jedi. It has green lightsabers. Wow, I did not know that. So you're saying the people who have golden... So Blizzard is saying people who have all golden cards are evil. Uh, well, it's, uh, you know, it's a perspective. <laughs> it's not that dark side is evil, it's different. Alright, so they're uh, making... Going for the motions here. Uh, using the Defender of Argus again, being a good card. Uh, but I believe that will be it. Uh, seven points of mana. That's the Bomb Lobber plus... Crackle. Close crackle, yeah. Yeah, he's definitely going to have enough to do it here because he can even crackle the 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, he, he has exactly yeah. lethal even just with crackle. He can uh, crackle the 3-3, three, three, or in fact, he can fire elemental the 3-3, three, three, trade into the 8-2, and then the two shredders and the Lothev is exact lethal. So that's going to be game number one. Going over to Alchemix here. Can Alchemix spot lethal here? <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think he will. I don't think... Yeah, I think he's seen it. Uh, and that's going to be game number one, fairly quick fashion. Going over yeah, that scale. was that was pretty fast, and um, the the, the mech shaman can do that. It, the mech shaman, if not, um, well, actually, that's a, a pretty interesting game because there was a fiery works. So I wanted to say that if you don't respond to what mech shaman is going to play, uh, you are in trouble. And warrior normally has the tools because you do have fiery works, you do have the shield slam and, and the executes, but here. Um, Alchemix opening was able to to counter the, the possible responses that they had, and uh, really uh, strengthen the the fact that he had those the, the curve and all the cards that he needed. 
uh, something really difficult for the warrior to deal with. There was also no brawl, which is important. So they yeah. didn't they didn't have the tools to stop him. And the low feb came down at the exact right time for Alchemist as well. Um, so that, you know we talked about the control lineup of Dale really versus the the aggro lineup of Alchemix. It's kind of a classic control versus aggro matchup. And uh, of the Paladin and the Priest, which do you think has the, the best chance against this mech deck? That's a very good question. I'm just uh, going through all the removal cards in my head. And um, I think Priest originally is a difficult deck to deal with when you're a mech, a mech deck. Because if you get all the removal cards early as a Priest, you are able to stop the synergies. With um, a lot of removal cards, a lot of clears. Um, thinking about organized soul priest and circle of healing, you are able to clear, and then stop all the synergies that uh, make that can produce. Uh, so I think um, priest is actually better, but both decks are suited to win uh, with equality consecration paladins. Also nice having weapons to in uh, to interact with the minions. Okay, well we're gonna get into this game and see what uh, Dale's decided to to come back with here. The light shall bring victory. Heart Stats Champions League Season 1 Semi-Finals Dale CZ versus Alchemist Alright, okay. so again, Cogmaster and a very good opening for Alchemist having the coin, having piloted Shredder um, on the Dale side we see that this is in fact a control priest uh, because of the Pyromaster in his hand, so it's not a death roll one, a Shrinkmeister as well a great card to be able to uh, you know, deal with those four attack minions that are really difficult and were difficult um, before GVG. And there's one part of the combo that Dale's really going to need to be able to come back into this matchup if the mechs start to get out of control. But going to see a Cogmaster here and possibly a Coined Harvest Golem on turn two. A uh, little bit of a slower start for Alchemix, but still certainly threatening the Priest. Well, Cogmaster is always good. And uh, if you coin the Harvest Golem, it's three points of damage. Um, then possibly a Hex uh, into a Dark Cultist, if um, if there is a Dark Cultist. You mostly expect a Dark Cultist to come uh, into Pilot to Shredder, that's um, hard to deal with, and then the Fire um, Elemental. So it is something that, uh, that will give Alchemix um, the tempo advantage there. Anoyatron again, saving him. <laughs> Once again, that Annoyatron, just so annoying. Dale used the Shrinkmeister there, took a gamble that he'd be able to get a, a really good trade with it on turn two against something like a Harvest Golem or uh, perhaps a Mech Warp or, or indeed the Cogmaster itself. But that Annoyatron is going to put pay to those ideas. On the other hand, uh, Dale actually has the Pyromancer and the spells. So he will, he sh if he gets another spell, hmm. He will be able to clear, but do you really want to clear with Pyromancer? Uh, it's difficult. You, I mean, if you were able to clear, you would have to burn one of your Circles of Healing, and I think that's such a useful spell for either card draw or board clear that using it with a Pyromancer on turn two really doesn't feel good. But I think we probably will just see the Powered Shield on one of, the, on one of these minions here. Oh, he's actually going to go for it. He's going for the clear. He knows that the clear is important, and... Um... Oh, oh, he's, he's, he's thought better of it. So what's the sequence here? You do circle, then yeah, circle you do one damage to the whole board. Um, I know your Tron is getting the shield out. And then you maybe buff. Yeah, yeah you, you do buff, buff the, the Pyromancer. Pyromancer. Clear his board. That's smart. Quickly. Yep, good sequencing from Dale. Does get the Holy Smite as well. That's going to be important for him to be able to clear the board. Uh, in following turns. So Dale's drawing pretty well here. I think that was uh, executed really well. Uh, he was able to clear, he was able to deny the mech, so now if there is a Tinker Down Technician, um, there won't be a spare part and he will face a free free. He also got the Spire Monster on board, which is threatening the board with the AoE powers, and is a free attack minion that can trade with whatever is going to get played on turn free. Yeah, but he do the Dale does certainly have the, the board advantage at this point. Which so early in the game against Mech, Maid, Mech Shaman, I was going to say Mech Mage, uh, against an, an, ag an aggressive deck, taking control of the board early on, can we make the difference? And, and Alchemist doesn't have uh, Mech Warpers or anything like that to be able to train a lot of big minions, on a lot of you know reasonable minions on the board. He's going to have to go for probably either a, a Harvest Golem or a Piloted Shredder at this point, and both of those trade... I, I guess the Harvest Golem probably trades better with the Pyromancer guaranteed. 
it's um the, the the thing is like the spider master can be healed and uh you definitely don't want to coin shredder because then you just lose it to the trade and um if you play harvest golem you know that a, a possible heal can happen and then your harvest golem is just going to die to to the trade and and maybe a spell uh which will be devastating and uh right now picking up um injured blade master and dale can can have a really nice play uh he can just um use the the holy uh holy smite on the harvest golem and then kill it with the pyromancer's power then maybe play the um, uh injured blade master and use circle of healing again uh in this way he clears the board uh, denies the mech and is left with a four seven and a free free i believe yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, he's going to be able to get the three, three, and the four, six. That's uh, that's going to be both his circles of healing done. So that's going to feel pretty good if you're alchemist, knowing that you're probably apart from Holy Nova, there's no AOE left in the deck. So out of Holy Nova range, but this Pyromancer is in the board, and that's going to be a problem. But outside of of Holy Nova range, you're probably pretty safe to get minions on the board. I'm going to see a, a snap hex on that four, six. Those. Blade Master's so difficult to deal with. I don't think there's any class that could deal with a Blade Master really efficiently, but uh, Alchemic's going ahead and just clearing that out. Mind Control, not the most useful card, but a great turn five option for Dale with the Sludge Belcher, and Alchemic's probably feeling a little bit bad about that, that Hex now. Well, um, you have to you have to deal with it for a seven when you have a chance, but uh, still, Alchemy's uh, for sure feeling bad because um, he is behind. Right now, he is developing that Fire Elemental, which is important, but being Shaman, being especially a Mech Shaman, you do want to have minions on board, and you do want to have initiative. Right now, he's playing from behind, even though he has a couple of nice cards in hand. Uh, we already see like Flame Tomb Totem working best if you have more minions on board. He only has his Fire Elemental now. If there will be a Shadow Ward Death into that Fire Elemental, that will be devastating for Alchemix. Yeah. We only see the Shadow Man as a mind control. So Dale just opting to attack Hero Power and pass last turn. Alchemix is possibly considering the Bomb Lover here. Try and get through these taunts, but... Looks like he's probably just going to go for the pilot shredder, maybe the Annoyatron to put up a little bit of defense of his own. But that he's got to be careful of those smaller minions because of the shadow madness. Yeah, also Cabal Shadow Priest. Uh, you don't want to give your opponent minions. So Alchemix is in a really weird uh, spot right now. Uh, he knows that opponent has two cards and didn't play anything. So we have to think about what is the possible card he has in his hand. Is there a Cabal Shadow Priest? Is there Shadow Madness? Uh, what do I actually play? Wow, Dr. Boom top deck in this spot is amazing. <laughs> that is incredible. That's probably n the best card that Dale could have hoped to see off the top of his deck. And he also has his mind control, which is sitting here um, unused, but in three turns, that card can actually turn the game around. Um, Dr. Boom just uh, insta board presence. You still have the frog, you still have the token. So you can get the shield out, but uh, it, it certainly looks good for for Dale still with uh, with options in hand. Yeah, we talked about this yesterday, but uh, you know the decisions that the Mech Shaman has to make from the more traditional Shaman archetype is that Mech Shaman probably doesn't run Lightning Storm. So Dale, you know, knowing possibly knowing a bit about the Mech Shaman archetype, you know, he, being played by some high pop some popular players like Firebat, he possibly knows that there's no Lightning Storm in this deck and. The, you know, those two little taunts are really, really annoying for, for alchemic stuff to get through right now. The bombs aren't going to be cleared. There's It's actually starting to build up quite nicely for Dale. But uh, yeah. Paramace top deck is pretty good. Yeah, it is good. Also, alchemix is a way to clear uh, Dr. Boom as it is, but you'll have to use um, uh, Flame Tomb Totem to be able to trade uh, his 6-2 elemental into Dr. Boom. Um, he can also go for phase for 6 damage, ignoring the bombs for now, and uh, develop something like... Um, I, I, I keep forgetting the name of the... Whirling Zapomatic. Zapomatic. Right. He opts not to go for it, though. He, he wants to try and conceal that a little bit. I, I can't say I blame him, uh, not wanting to expose himself to potential Shadow Madness before he has to. This is one of the... The difficult things with Shadow Man is that you're going to see that cast on the Annoyatron. And obviously, yeah, that's, that's the thing you don't want to do. But then again, what other options do you have? You, you at least kill one of the mechs, and you are uh, able to use the bombs to clear. 
That's not a bad hit. Yeah, the healing totem can just be so irritating and... Oh, wow. Okay, that Amani Berserker is pretty big right now thanks to the Flame Tongue Totem, and it's gonna actually trade with this Dark Cultist, but so does the Bomb Lobber. So it's the perfect target for Bomb Lobber in this Priest deck. Yeah, Bomb Lobber is super powerful right now, and also Alchemix will, will be able to play a mech uh, to capitalize on the Power Maze, and buffing this uh, Wizomatic. Oh. What's it gonna go up to? It's gonna go up to five and then seven? So that's going to be 14 damage, and actually, this game feels pretty over at this point. I'm not sure what Dale can top deck. Another Dark Cultist, that's not what he needed. He's one turn away from mind control, and uh, that's yeah, this, it. Game, that's this game is definitely going to be over. Zapomatic attacking for 16 alone. Well played. Yeah, Zapomatic is it's going to get buffed up to 7, isn't it? So it's going to be 14 off the Zapomatic. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's 14 plus, plus 4. <laughs> so 14 plus 7 so is 21 damage on board for Alchemix. This deck shaman really doing work here. We didn't see it do very much yesterday, but Dale's now down to his Paladin as the only deck to come back against the Druid, Warlock, and this mech shaman of Alchemix. Alchemix in a pretty comfortable position here to go to the final. Oh yeah, certainly. I'm... Um, um... I'm happy that we are seeing this Shaman more, because I wanted to see some Shaman gameplay, and Shaman is a class that um, fell behind and not everyone is playing it, especially in the tournament set, uh, setting. But uh, yeah, it's certainly looking good. It's, it's kind of playing like a Mech Mage, so if you don't bring the Mage, you, you might have brought uh, a Mech Shaman. And uh, Paladin versus the Zek, I feel it is an even matchup. And uh, if Mech Shaman plays like Mech Mage, has a good opening again with Cogmaster into, into Mechs and is being able to develop the board before Paladin is able to clear, uh, Alchemix is in a good position to actually sweep, uh, sweep Dale. Okay, well, we're going to get into the final game. It's going to be the Paladin of Dale against the Mech Shaman of Alchemix. The Dale is down to his last deck here. Let's see how it shakes out. Hammer. Heart Stats Champions League Season 1 Semi-Finals Alchemixed versus Dale CZ Okay, so we see the Paladin double Quartermaster and Terrian in hand for Dale. Those are definitely, and Dr. Boom as well, those are not the cards that Dale wanted to see at all. Uh, yeah, he doesn't, um, well on the other hand he, he has Master for Battle, so if uh, there is nothing coming from Alchemix, they will be able to develop Master for Battle on turn 3 and maybe coin the Quartermaster. And we, we do know that Alchemix is not running any Lightning Storm, so if Dale is able to take advantage and build up the board, that will be game. Uh, for yeah. Alchemix, a pretty slow, uh, slow start with no turn to max, no turn 1 Cogmaster, uh, but you know, he might have a time to actually develop the board before Dale um, explodes with uh, with the dudes. Um, MC Tech coming into hand for Dale as well. That could be a useful card in this matchup. We're going to see the monster for battle. But actually, Alchemix, his hand is shaking out a little bit differently really from the last two games. We didn't see the really early mechs, but what we do see in hand is a, a load of burst with the double flame tongue and the crackle. Yeah, but we see the Master for Battle from Dale, and uh, Quartermaster is getting dropped next turn. Now the question is, is Alchemix thinking about this Quartermaster being dropped? He didn't, so he went for a Pilot of Shredder. And right now this gives Dale an opportunity to develop a very powerful board with the Quartermaster. Yeah. He knows his he saw the coin, and I think Alchemix knew straight away. He knows that. Two arms, man. Three arms, man. <laughs> three men with three arms. Just clearing his board. Cool. Uh, yeah, you could see Alchemix's face when the coin came out. He didn't need to wait to see the card, the little grimace. He knew exactly what was coming out. 3-2. Uh, Do you trade with this here? I think you go for face. Um, yeah, go for face. Al Make Alchemix trade to win the board back. Yeah, it's like you have a... Being day, we have a good position anyway. If Alchemix trades, uh, you are fine. Like, you just dealt three points of damage. If he doesn't, you play another Quartermaster and get double five attack minions. Well, the Annoyatron does come into hand, so some early mechs for Alchemist are finally showing up. He does have the Power Mace, has the Crackle, but it's difficult to see what Alchemist can do this turn to, to kind of take back some momentum at all. 
He might try taking... Well, he has a couple of decisions. Uh, the first that game comes to mind is uh, if he wants to be really YOLO about stuff, he can go with Anoyatron and um, maybe a weapon to clear one of the dudes and then trade with another one. Uh, he can go with Bomb Lover as well, try to hit one of the dudes. But I think still, or maybe even Power Mason told him up without um, developing Anoyatron. Yeah, clearing the second dude is actually going to be really important. Just based on the board, I personally might have gone with the Flame Tongue Totem to clear the Quartermaster because it's the, the bigger health minion and harder to trade with later. But uh, Dale does have the second Quartermaster in hand, so if, if Alchemist had left up some dudes, we probably would have seen a, another Quartermaster coming down. And now Sludge Belcher for Dale. This is this is shaking out pretty nicely after a, a slightly clunky looking opening hand. They also making good decisions to trade with totems. Uh, against the shaman, you do want to clear the board at all times, and we can see double flank and totem in Alchemic's hand just being sitting useless here with no minions on board. So right now he got a second bomb lobber, and um, his options are are limited this turn. Like you do totem spell power totem crackle, yellow crackle, yellow crackle. Hello. Oh, and this is the spot there. He's going to have to clear it with the power mace. He's going to buff this Annoyatron, though. Wow, that's a big Annoyatron. Um, it's a spider it is... tank with taunt and divine shield. Yeah, that's that's actually not bad. And uh, there is no silence from Dale. So he will have to actually trade with this. He does have the true silver, so that's going to clear it out pretty effectively. And we'll probably just see... Another dude here, Dale's going to be looking to build those those dudes back up and get the second Quartermaster off at some point. Probably in the next couple of turns to really lock this game out. I'm really curious if Alchemix will be able to get back to this game with those Bomb Lobbers. But is it the time for a Bomb Lobber? Or do you just throw them up and Spider Tank? The board is not that scary for now. Do you, do you consider using the Flame Tongue to trade your Totem with the Slime here? Mm, bomb Lobber does clear it and that's all he's going to do this turn yeah i think bomb lover was a good choice like you do uh, give yourself a chance to kill one of the minions and develop uh something else uh dale playing dr boom on seven again a very powerful play this is going to be enough uh to win the game alchemy is actually quite low at um 19 point 18 points of health yeah there's 12 damage on the board for dale no way to clear this Dr. Boom as Alchemist. This feels really difficult. Is there? there is uh, 12. 12, 12 damage, so it's not it's not quite lethal. Dale would need to draw his second true silver and... Uh, if, actually, if he, he... He does... He could set up for lethal in, in, in a turn with the Quartermaster and just develop that to the board. Um, Alchemist is just going to have to play some minions here and, and try and get back. Equality, that's... With equality, gonna... Dale actually has a chance to win this game. If he goes for equality, um, kill the dudes with the bombs, and if the bombs hit for... How much four damage each. will... It would have to be four on both. It's pretty unlikely. He needs six damage on face, uh, because he can go for equality, quartermaster, uh, quartermaster. And then he will have. He can't can equality five. Quartermaster because of the low feb. So he can only equality this turn. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. That's oh. not bad. <laughs> Clears this Screaming golden minions. And uh, if you're Alchemist at this point, do you think about conceding? Um, I think you do. You maybe just uh, wait for one more card and uh, hope that you get some more information. Pilot Shredder is some information you're, you're being given for free, but other than that, you're really good shape. And, um, Bomb Lover Bomb kills Lover. the 1 1. For Alchemix to win, Bomb Lover had to hit face and crit. Yeah, so that's going to be it. That's uh, game number 3 over to Dale. Dale not quite out of this yet he is using that paladin to knock off the mech shaman but uh alchemist does have two decks left he's got his druid and his probably zoo warlock deck do you do you think he would go for the the zoo here um against paladin i think i would go for a druid and um the reasoning is that you 
you didn't show the the warlock yesterday so you want to and I, everybody knows the druid because you won with the druid so you might go with the druid and you you have nothing to lose you like even if you lose with the druid you still have your warlock so you can okay. pick your druid yeah so we're going to get into this game now and it's going to be paladin versus either the warlock or the druid of alchemist i must protect the wild heart stats champions league season one semi-finals Alchemist versus Dale CZ. Okay, so it is the Druid of Alchemist, uh, as Nimsh correctly predicted, and I incorrectly called. Uh, we see things like Shield and Minibot in hand for Dale. That's going to be pretty important in the early game. And no, none of the ramp cards that Alchemist was looking for in his opening. Yeah, this is a very interesting matchup. Like, uh, I'm still in a fence. How do you play it as a Paladin? You can go uh, aggro uh, route and... Uh, if you have Shielded Mini Bot, you, you basically play as many minions as possible and try to be very aggressive. Or you can try uh, being a bit defensive. It, it mostly depends on what cards you get, but I've seen Paladin winning this matchup with both strategies being uh, controlish or being aggressive. For for the Druid, as you mentioned, like there is nothing really um, good in the beginning, but you might want to spend some time and um and bluff your opponent that maybe you do have some place maybe you do have innervate but you're not sure if you really want to innervate right now we see the combo in hand for alchemix that's a little bit dead in his hand right now but it's always nice to have the combo on hand super early yeah combo is very important in this matchup as well if you're able to develop the, the board a bit and um, get the damage done uh, with the combo uh, guaranteed on turn nine you have that opening to win the game uh, many games are lost as a druid uh, versus Paladin, where if you, if I hmm. didn't have the combo and gave Paladin enough time to heal up and develop Tyrion. We don't see any healing in the hand for Dale yet, but we did see an antique heal bot, I think, come in in the last game. So he certainly does have some. I'm just going to see the Divine Shield pinged off here for Alchemist. Mind Control Tech, that's probably not going to see any use anytime soon, but... There's not a great play in the hand for Dale yet. He's just going to do it and pass here. And then, do you think we see Keeper of the Grove to clear this mini bot, or does Alchemist just develop the Shredder, or do something with Innervate? I think Keeper is definitely fine. You you do clear the two two uh, and develop a two four on board. Even if there is a coin quarter master, the free free uh, dude is not clearing your uh, your Keeper. Uh, so this is a very powerful play. Uh, Alchemix is not thinking about using Innervate to to use uh, Shapeshift on a one one. There is no point doing that. Uh, because, like, as I said, even if there is a Quartermaster, you, you will be happy to see the Quartermaster now. But there is a, a Sludge Belcher play, which is much, much better. Um, overall, Dale has a, a pretty good hand right now. Even though he doesn't uh, have the Master for Battle, he does have the Creatures on Curve. Uh, Sylvanas will be important as a Druid, especially because Silence was already used. Um, other than that, he has AoEs and um, Equality Consecration. Do you think you just play the, the bigger Taunt here? Or is he gonna he's gonna go for a wrath it looks like and maybe clear the first part of the belcher body with the the keeper of the grove yeah and then you can also develop the druid claw yeah very good use of innervate uh this mid stage of the turns here slightly bigger taunt than the sludge belcher as well what's important is that you can play it as a taunt uh, because you, you've seen the coin and you 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 know your opponent has uh, only five points of mana next turn so if even if he is playing a black knight and if he has black knight in hand he won't be able to play it next turn so druid of the claw is going to do, uh, to do some damage at least yeah that's going to definitely get some work done and again there's not a great play for dale here do you consider quartermaster on this board and just buff the one dude you might consider equality, maybe, and, uh, and then playing something else like uh, equality and Acolyte of Pain. You can do equality and um, Rainforest to create another dude to make Quartermaster a bit stronger. I wonder. Definitely not Quartermaster. It's like it's not doing anything. It's not really developing the board and uh, not clearing anything as well. We're gonna see equality here, I guess, to try and take this board back. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And you develop Alkalite of, um, of Pain on empty board. This ensures that Sylvanas next turn will be powerful as a card, and uh, Acolyte is going to draw you something at least. Yep, so the Shredder coming out from Alchemix, he's able to develop that. Uh, that Black Knight he maybe would have wanted to deal with the Belcher, that's coming to his hand a little bit late, but if there's a second Belcher, 
that's certainly going to be nice. Uh, Sylvana is an option here, but we're, yeah, it looks like we're just going to see the Aldor Peacekeeper to neutralize this Shredder and enable you to draw a card off your Acolyte. Yeah, I like this play because um, Dale doesn't have that many cards in hand, so he wants uh, more ver variety and uh, quality plays. So here, going for this, uh, instead of developing Sylvanas. So, well, developing Sylvanas would be cool as well, uh, because then um, Shredder was played first, so the Devral will trigger first, and uh, he will get something with Sylvanas. But this also gives uh, a Druid a way to deal with Sylvanas before uh, something really big is on board. Uh, he takes the risk with Master from Balu, uh, which is uh, which is okay, I believe. Like, if there is no swipe and you know your opponent only has four cards in, in hand, uh, you are in a very good position. But this is giving an Alchemist a chance. Yeah, sadly, there is a swipe in hand for Alchemist. And it's just a question of, I guess, whether you swipe the 3-3 three, three or the 1-2. Uh, you can clear the you can clear the whole board if you sweep the one two, but it does mean that you give your opponent uh, two cards off the acolyte. I think you can actually go for swipe on acolyte and use shape shift to kill the free free. Yeah, I think that's right as well. You don't want to give your good because you're you know you're pretty equal in cards right now. You don't want to. Okay, so he, yeah, he is going to go ahead and. Clear the and swipe the three three, so the athlete is going to get to draw two cards here. Well, that's um, that's also a valid play. It um, it uh, ensures that such uh, the um, piloted shredder is actually on board still. And uh, the one card with when paladin has six cards in hand, the one card is not making that much of a difference. He still has only seven mana to, to execute his turn. So he values the. Um, it's like a, a simple simple math for alchemics. How much do I value Pyro the Shredder still being on board as opposed to my opponent having one more card? Yeah, it's. And we're going to see a Pyro the Shredder come out from Dale here. It's, it's an interesting decision, I guess. You're going to, you've got to think so many turns ahead at this point. Um, and you can see the Alchemy the Rocket, and that could be very crucial in this matchup. It's you know very close, and those little, those little edges can make the difference. You know. You do have to launch the rocket, I think, as early as possible. What What is your opinion on that, Nims? How do you think that affects uh, the pl the way the game will play out? <laughs> Launching the rocket. Personally, I want to. I like to launch the rocket and also get all the bombs on the left to explode and all the uh, fireworks to 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 fire. Um, but uh, other than that, I don't know. It doesn't influence the the combo that much. Yeah, I, th I think I think it says more about us as a yourself whoever you are as players but how much destruction you do to the board um so the uh the gold shower one if you destroy everything on that board i think it says something about your, your yourself as a as a person rather than just the player but we digress i'm gonna see the true silver come out here to take off the second part of shredder alchemic's looking a little bit frustrated at this point yeah, it's certainly uh, frustrating for Alchemix, where uh, you didn't deal as much damage, and uh, you do feel like, uh, even though the com you, you have the combo, combo is only 14 points of damage. Uh, well, with the Pilot Shredder, it's uh, actually 17, but it's still not enough. Like, you're not able to win right now. Uh, you are facing a powerful board uh, from your opponent, and, um, well, you're not afraid of Tyrion, because if Tyrion comes, you will play the Black Knight. But still, it's uh, not a good situation. You get. you have this white rope, which is uh, a dead card. <laughs> Getting the, f yeah, a one four and a four one. He probably That's has a, to. That one four is actually a, a really difficult card. I don't know how many times I've been messed up by that card in arena. It's the uh, the narrow bar ambusher, I believe, or the narrow bar web lord. Is that it? That's the web lord. Yeah, ambusher and is it, a rope card. Yeah, the the narrow bar web lords, uh, which cost makes minions of battle cry cost two more actually can be really uh, really devastating for both sides. Right now for Alchemix is such a weird position. Like, you do want to do something. Uh, you do want to develop a minion, maybe the Black Knight, but on the other hand, you know that if you play Black Knight, if there's Tyrion, like, you have no way to deal with that. You've, you've already spent one of the uh, silences you have. So just using Shapeshift on turn 9, that definitely doesn't sound right and uh, doesn't feel feel good as well. No, he, he, de he was considering for a little while, I think, just using the combo to get damage in, um, which is a reasonable play. It's not a, not a terrible idea. We talked about that yesterday, but using those Savage Roars, uh, in particular just by themselves, to get damage in when you can and, and press home an advantage. But Alchemix is really playing from behind here. So for, for Dale, he has all the options in hand. Um, an easy way to clear a 4-1 with a 1-4. He still has a 4-3 on board. He knows he's outside of the combo range. 
he might be thinking that he is because Alchemix didn't do anything. He has five cards and he shape shifted. So Dale might be thinking, hey, I'm in range because he might have Innervate and double Savage Roar and Force of Nature. But if he attacks face with a weapon, then he gets out of range because the combo with double Savage Roar is at 22 um, points of damage. So he's just going to develop a board with Savannah's um, and Juggler. Playing preventive and uh, giving himself a chance to win. Um, well, maybe not next turn. Oh, he actually did an attack with a weapon. Interesting. So double Savage Roar Innervate would actually be lethal here. Yeah, he doesn't have the Innervate, unfortunately, but he does have three parts of that four-card combo, and uh, he's going to use the Wild Growth to draw here, see if he can get anything else. That second Force of Nature, that's not what he needs at all, and now he can't even combo for damage. And looking at what's on the board, well, there's 9, 12, 16, uh, 18 with the Consecrate. Not quite enough damage for Dale to finish this either. Yeah, but still, this is really painful for Alchemex. You do, you do see this, and uh, you feel bad about it. He will probably have to force shapeshift and go for phase for seven to put your opponent at fourteen. Exactly, exactly fourteen. Exactly combo range. But then your opponent can attack with the true silver, and he'll he'll back up. So he is probably going to need the. He's going to need to top deck the innervate, I think. To yeah, but even trade for the juggler. Oh, he's going to trade entirely, innervate. actually. So Alchemix trying to buy himself a bit more time, and um, that was actually smart. Like, your opponent didn't attack with Silver. So right now, Alchemix is telegraphing the fact that he doesn't have a way to finish the game. So he really hopes for the Innervate top deck, and the fact that Dale will not heal himself, not attack with a weapon. But there is a oh. Lay on Hands that is actually shutting Alchemix down, and he's like, ah, oh, okay. Now even the Innervate top deck is not winning him the game. Yeah, that's probably the end of it, to be honest. That Lay on Hands... Probably seals this game for Dale. He's probably going to level it up at 2-2. Two to two. What a series in our first semi-final here. But uh, we actually, that's the second game in a row we've seen from Alchemist. He's just drawn really, really badly and just not had anything to, to get off in his hand. I wanted to see the Innervate. That Innervate will be the most painful Innervate ever because you played really well uh, putting your opponent at 22 and trying to get a combo out. But then... This game is not over yet uh, because Dale doesn't have the the lethal potential. Paladin is not a bursty deck, so it's not like Dale is going to combo himself. Yeah, personally, I like the trade here. I think maybe you tr you. I personally like Kelthazad here because I think that just puts a really big threat on the board, and then you could use your your Shredder and even the True Silver to to clear to clear up this spectral knight. Take, all, take that damage off the board and remove any potential Valkamix to extend his combo. Um, and obviously you get your Shredder back with Kel'Thuzad. An amazing thing is that Alchemix can still win this game. If Dale decides to uh, just go for face and just keep the 4-6 on board with no taunts on his side, Alchemix top decks Innervate, he will have... 27. That's 30, I think. Because with double Savage Roar... Um, double Savage yeah. Yeah, that's exactly 30 points of health. So even if he heals himself, uh, Innervate is lethal. And that's actually crazy. So it'd be 20 plus... Eight. 22 plus 8. Yeah, yeah, that's... Oh, it gets the Ancient of Lore. I might just... Wow. Well, this is not the top that he needed. Innervate was lethal. Alchemix is playing super, super patient, but he is still not out. He can prolong the game and maybe, maybe he will actually get what he needs. Um, right now, with the combo, he has 20 points of damage, 9 damage of lethal. But I guess, he, you know, if you're Alchemix, you're thinking, I need to top deck the Innervate here. I need to do the double Savage Roar, so you don't want to give away those combo pieces. I think he just yeah. goes for Ancient of Lore here. It's so difficult. Ancient of Lore and heal probably, uh, because you need to ensure that you have minions on board, and you need to ensure that you stay alive to give yourself a chance of a top deck. Yeah. Even if he tra even if uh, he traded for the Shredder, and the Shredder minion was no damage, even with Consecrate, it still would have been lethal if he hadn't healed. Right now it's also a hard choice, like, do you develop um, BGH to have, like, more minions? You do have to think about uh, Consecration from your opponent. 
I've got the beast That's what we're going to see. We're going to see that BGH come out. Fairly sensible decision from Alchemix, I think. He doesn't have a huge amount of choices, but a quality, well, we actually have a, yeah, a quality Consecrate in hand for a deal is pretty devastating at this point. Uh, equally, Consecrate robs uh, Alchemix uh, from a chance to get a top deck and win uh, with Innervate. So it's a pretty good play, but uh, this board can be dismantled with mm. uh, simple Consecration as well. With um, just attacking into the 5-5 five, five with Pilot to Shredder, Consecrate, and then killing the 4-3 with, um, with a 2-5. Also, Dale has no reason to fear... Uh, well, he can think about double uh, Savager combo. But uh, at 29 and uh, True Silver, he can actually attack into something with True Silver as well. I mean, if he's counting cards here, he sees that these four cards that have been in hand for Alchemix for a long time haven't been played. They've not been played as the combo, so he knows that it's not the four combo pieces. He knows that he maybe has two, maybe has three, but he's still looking for something. So I guess you kind of play it a little bit safe. Yep, so we're going to see just the Consecrate here. And then... Aldor Peacekeeper, so he's gonna Peacekeeper the 5-3, trade with the 4-1, and then go face with the sh Okay, he's actually gonna... Oh, that's interesting. He's gonna put the Ancient Vote just down to 1. Wait, is that is that actually still lethal for Alchemix? 27, yes, if he gets Innervate. Again, if he would get an Innervate, that game would be over. Because that right would be knows. 27. Uh, Ragnaros is an interesting card to get, um, but still, he's mousing over the combo, thinking, "Just when do I? When do I just go for it? When do I need? I know I need to top deck the innervate, but is it going to come? Should I just play it now?" I think, yeah, you just go for Ragnaros here, and then go all face. What can happen with Ragnaros? Is it is it lethal? Is a seven nine? So he's not dead yet. And uh, there's no second consecration, so basically no way to win for now. Anti kill bot. That's <laughs> gonna be so devastating for Dale, for Alchemix. Doctor Boom. That's even worse. Wow. And, so BGH uh, and for the Ragnaros and Doctor Boom. Alchemix. I think that's probably gonna be it. Yeah, and now if he even top decks the innervate, he will be too damage of lethal. That will be a really painful for him. He... Oh. There's his own Dr. Boom, but it's not enough. And that's going to be game number four. Going over to Dale. Dale fighting back in this with his Paladin deck of all things. Uh, and he's going to go 2-0 and with Alchemix. It's going to be the Warlock of Alchemix against the Paladin of Dale to decide our first finalist. We're down to the final game here, Nimsh. Wow, what a what a match! It's like I really have a lot of respect for Dale because you know I, I didn't know Dale before before this tournament. We told everyone that he is a mystery player, and uh, what those pros have, like what an advantage those pros have against people who are not known, is mostly experience. Like Alchemix played in so many tournaments before, and you know just uh, sitting here facing a, a pro player or a player with a build-up name, you think, hey, this guy has, has won um, a lot of stuff before. Um, he achieved a lot of stuff. It's stressful. It's like you might um, think, I, I can't win this game because this guy is just better in my head. Uh, but Dale is, is a guy who's just going there and going for all the pro players, uh, playing control decks, um, which are even more stressful and difficult because you, you mostly have more cards, so we have more opportunity to make a mistake. But here, um, even though he didn't play around uh, double Savage or Combo, um, that, was, that was okay. Like, one interview was played already before, so uh, they could make an assumption that it's, it's really unlikely that something like that is not going to make hand. And uh, okay. it made calls. Let's get into game number five here. Paladin versus Warlock to decide our first semi-final. Heart Stats Champions League Season 1. Semi-finals. Alchemist versus Dale CZ. Okay, so we do see it is a zoo for Alchemist. We see Echoing Ooze. Uh, which is one of the grossest golden cards, I think. I know. Is that a wisp? Wow, that's actually a wisp. So a wisp being drawn in a in the fifth game of this amazing semi-final match. Okay, I'm calling it now. I'm calling it right now. Hobgoblin Warlock. 
Well, see, that's actually not, use, not hard. <laughs> yeah, can you get. use the Wisp, the Void, all of these one attack minions? I see a second echoing is. I I think this could be Hobgoblin Zoo. Yeah, it's, it's going to be Hobgoblin Zoo. Unless Alchemix just want, wants to troll us and he is bringing a standard zoo with a Wisp to, to troll people. Well, like um, I said, we saw we saw him bring in the group stages uh, a Blood Knight variant of Zoo, which is a variant we've seen before. But it was a you know it's a, a kind of a gimmicky Zoo. And I guess as as a player who's been known for aggro, who has really been a fan of the Zoo archetype, maybe Alchemist is just trying a lot of different archetypes, has a lot of different ideas for how to make Zoo relevant again post Undertaker. Oh yeah, certainly. Yeah, like Alchemist has a Zoo history uh, himself, so definitely trying different builds. And he is a, a deck builder, as mentioned before. So if there is a new zoo coming from any player, I would say that's Alchemist. Um, also, what's important that in this matchup, Paladin really needs Consecration at some point. Zoo is going to extend the board, play a lot of minions. If you don't have the Consecration, Zoo will just continue to press advantage because uh, Zoo will have minions to trade into your stuff. And we'll continue drawing cards with the with life tap, the hero power. So if there is no consecration at a key moment, uh, Zoo is going to overrun Paladin. Right now we don't see the consecration. We see uh, Sludge Belcher in turn two not being very uh, great for um, for Dale. Uh, even the knife missing because this Hunter Keeper is was still going to trade into the knife dagger. So Alchemix just uh, saved one point of health here. So we're gonna see the board open up here for Alchemix. He's gonna be. Playing into the Consecrate if it does come with that Echoing Ooze as well. You do have to make the play. Uh, you have to assume that there is no Consecrate and just overextend, build up your board and, and press advantage. That's that's how you win this matchup. If there is no Consecrate, you just win. Um, if there is a Consecrate, you have a lot of minions still to fall up and build up your board again. And uh, sometimes even with one Consecrate pod, it's not even able to win that. So I feel like right Alchemist, Al Alchemist has an advantage. But he he needs the Hobgoblin. This is a kind of like a different Zoe's mentioned. <laughs> yeah, Alchemist is thinking long and hard about playing here. I guess normally with Zoo you would just throw out minions as much as possible. But you you know you got to save these minions for when the Hobgoblin comes out. I think you possibly consider going with the Argent Squire here just because it's a little bit more Consecrate resistant. Well, um, it's like it's really it, it really depends if you make a gamble that there is no consecrate. If you make a gamble that there is, you do trade and develop uh, echoing goose. If you make a gamble that there is no consecrate, you just go. With this is like different. You, uh, both decisions are correct. Like playing something uh, and not trading, or like trading. It's really, it's, it's mostly like a, a call you make at the at the moment. So we see it's a top deck uh, pilot shredder for Dale on turn four. That's pretty perfect. And Lothip coming in for Alchemist. That's also a pretty great turn five draw. Yeah, it's interesting. Like uh, both players actually got a card, which is uh, very powerful. There is a consecrate for for Dale. That will be important. But do you consecrate now? Uh, probably not because of Lothip, but um, basically that belt. Yep, so the turn 5 Sludge Belcher is going to come down, and this board is uh, starting to look okay for Dale. See Implosion there though, that could be the card to help him get back in here. And there's a Doom Guard. We haven't seen this Hobgoblin yet, if it does exist. I do say we haven't seen the deck lists, that is entirely an assumption on our part. Uh, Nimsh said it kind of correctly. That's a very correct assumption. Also, Alchemix... Um not uh, respecting the, the consecrate for now uh just using using this um implosion to extend the board on the other hand uh it is taunting like um f forcing a consecration so right now he will know that there is uh no consecration in the hand uh, a second consecration is really unlikely so he will be uh, able to overextend reporting for duty there's double wisps sitting there just waiting for an opportunity Direwolf Alpha, Life Tap coming in. Juggler. Okay, so we might actually see the Echo. Yeah, we're going to see the Echoing Ooze here. Um, and he's going to hope for those daggers going the right places. There's one. And the second Apple. one. Oh, the second one doesn't hit the right. Doesn't hit the slime. There's a muster for battle. Quartermaster in hand for Dale as well. Do you hold on to that and, pl and pull off the uh, turn 8 combo next turn? Um, I think you can actually overextend. Uh, I would not suspect Elfire or Shadow Flame. So playing Master for Battle is actually safe. 
Um, he decides to go with Trisilver, which is also fine. But uh, Paladin is in a very good position. Like, he stopped uh, the zoo early. Uh, Alchemix was not able to develop the Hobgoblin with Wisp. Oh, he has dead cards. He's playing those Wisps. Uh, Wisp is not doing anything. Uh, so they will be able to develop Tyrion next turn and then be in a very good position. Well, we've seen a Noyatron as well. Yeah, that to me says this, this has to be a Hobgoblin somewhere. Uh, those Dark Wolf Alphas are pretty important as well, actually, though. Yeah, it's a great card. But on the other hand, the Hobgoblin deck really relies on the Hobgoblin. And uh, with combo decks is that you may, you have to make them work, even if you don't get the combo part. So with Hobgoblin deck, well, right now, Alchemix is really struggling because it seems like this zoo, with, if you don't draw into Hobgoblin, it's, it's worse than a standard zoo. If you do draw into Hobgoblin, it will be amazing. You can just win right there. But uh, as we can see, no Hobgoblin is... Um, not doing anything for, for Alchemix, putting him in trouble. Yeah, I guess it feels a little bit like uh, if players, you know, played Miracle Rogue back in the day when that was such a big deck. You know, when, you, when those days when uh, Gadgetan was like cards 28 and 29 in your deck and you never drew it, you just couldn't get the deck to, to work. The deck relies on drawing those cards. So Sludge Belcher came into hand there for Dale. He might go for the... It's kind of difficult. He can only clear the anno Yeah, he's... Okay, he's looking at Silence. He can clear the Noitron and then pull off the the Muster combo, but a lot of that gets traded next turn, so he might just Silence and then clear up one of the Direwolf Alphas and then look at a Sludge Belcher or a, a Heal Bot. Yeah, that's a, a really a really good idea. You you do clear the Wolves to uh, limit the, the attack for, for those minions. And uh, just playing the Sludge Vulture that's not going to get killed by by the board right now. Uh, Alchemix, still no Hobgoblin for him. Uh, Defender of Argus is going to help a bit. He will be able to clear the Sludge Vulture. But um, it might as well be a turn to play everything on board. Just uh, get those Wisps, get the Zoom Guard, and try to build up a board where... Just say, alright, Hobgoblin, you didn't come. Alright, I can deal with that. Just uh, I, I need those Wisps on board, and I need my Zoom Guard. <laughs> Let's see if there's any reaction from Dale to the Wisps. <laughs> well played. So the Hobgoblin is out now. Hobgoblin did troll Alchemix, and uh, this is exactly what we were talking about. Right now, Alchemix's board is amazing. Oh, the mind control tag. Okay. Actually, some... Is Dale going to steal the Wisp? I mean, there's a really high chance of getting something really bad. Um, so I don't think so. I think we just see the muster here, though. Tech. I think there is no reason to not use mind control tech. Because yeah, if you're, if you're going to play the muster this turn, I think I guess you might as well. <laughs> he gets the wisp. So that was the <laughs> equal situation, a wisp on both sides. Both players having um, massive boards with a lot of small minions. Still no Hobgoblin. Alright, so um, Alchemix is going to play Juggler. And I think he has an advantage right now. He, he might be able to... Well, he has to clear the dudes. If there is a Quartermaster, and we know there is a Quartermaster, he will be in trouble if it's not cleared. Um... This, this is a very interesting board state. Yeah, he's going to clear as many of these as possible. Do you trade with the Doom Guard as well? Or do you just go face? I think I think you do. Um, you do want to deny the Quartermaster. But then uh, this is a turn where Dale can actually develop Tyrion. Yep, that's probably what we're going to see here. So Tyrion comes down and... Uh, Dale in a very, very comfortable position here. He's setting up for a lethal in just a couple of turns. Second Doom Guard? That's okay. Yeah, second Doom Guard can be helpful. That's definitely a very strong card. Especially if it takes um, his Divine Shield off. Oh, it goes face. Implosion is amazing, but he won't have mana for that. Um, the, important, the important part is that uh, Alchemix is actually pretty low on 8 points of health. Uh, so double Doomguard is powerful on board, but with 8 points of health, he won't be able to life tap that much. And uh, most of the cards he has in, deck, uh, in the deck right now uh, are just small one attack cards. Well, and double Hobgoblin, which is not doing much as well. 
he really wants to play this implosion this turn, but there's not enough mana. Yeah, it's so frustrating not to draw on it at the right time. Especially with the juggler on board, even. This implosion, if you will have enough mana, will be so powerful. But sorry, okay, Alchemix, Blizzard is not buffing implosion to free mana anytime soon. No, unfortunately not. I think it's already powerful enough as it is. So we do see the Ashbringer, and that's an equality as well. That's going to be absolutely gutting for Alchemix, because they're going to be able to trade for this Doomguard here. The Wisp is going to betray him and kill this uh, this uh, Doomguard. The Wisp was uh, really close to lethal. Um, if Alchemix would not clear the 1-1, one -one, that would be over with the Quartermaster buff, doing 8 points of damage, and the Wisp giving him an overkill. Um, Three points of health and uh, facing an Ashbringer. And there Hobgoblin it is! Finally comes. There Actually, is a Hobgoblin in this the, deck. Does it work with the Implosion? Uh, I think you have to play a minion, and Implosion is actually putting the minions on board. Well, that's going to be it. Hobgoblin did not come quick enough for Alchemix, and Dale is going to be our first finalist after beating Firebat and then doing a Dale in the groups. He's come all the way through. He beat Amaz yesterday, beat Alchemix here. And Dale is going to our final. He's going to be in with a chance of $3,000. Alchemist is going to go home with five hundred. dollars uh, Fought very well, obviously, to get to this point. Getting to the top four of any tournament is an achievement. But wow, Dale is... Uh, and that's going to inspire a little bit of confidence in Ari, I guess, being another open qualifier. But Dale shocking everyone. He's going to be in the final of the Hearthstats Champions League. Wow, that's actually amazing. Uh, fantastic perform uh, performance from Dale. And... Um... Great win for uh, Czech Republic as well. Another player that's really... Uh, well, Czech Republic is really a country where people play a lot of card games. I had a lot of friends... Uh, well, I have a lot of friends who, who played WoW TCG with me. There's a lot of great Magic players. And we have a lot of uh, great Hearthstone players. So it, it is in the culture, like playing cards. And Dale uh, is proving that he is one of the great... Um, one of the greatest um, Czech Republic Hearthstone players. Right now advancing to the final versus Alchemix. Um, we well, we have to say that Alchemix was playing the Hobgoblin deck, and the last card he played in the match was the Hobgoblin, a top deck um, as the last card. But still, I think the luck on both sides were more uh, was more or less equal. Um, Dale uh, Dale's hand wasn't that amazing, and uh, we've seen top decks from both sides. Uh, we've seen a lot of great decisions and uh, tough spots for both players. And uh, Dale coming on top, and uh, you know, with uh, no previous tournament experience that we've seen at least, because maybe. Dale is actually playing all the online cups and and, and being everywhere, but uh, with no recorded um, online performance, he is performing really exceptionally. Yeah, and he, I mean, he played in front of like twenty five thousand people yesterday against the mods, and that didn't phase him at all. He made some great decisions, wasn't phased at all, and uh, we came out on top here. We're going to take a quick two-minute break while we try and get hold of Dale uh, for a winner's interview and talk about how he's going to be preparing for the final, his view on the second semi-final. Then we're going to have Ari versus Gara in our second semi final before we get into our grand final. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Heart Stats Champions League Season 1 finals. Okay, so uh, we're back with our winner, Dale, our first finalist. And uh, first of all, Dale, congratulations. You've come through the Grinders League, the Challengers League. You've traveled so far to get to this point. How does it feel to be in the final? Yeah, it was great. I totally didn't expect that, so it's nice. Well, nice, I, definitely. Congratulations. Um, we we have like a couple of questions for you because you are the the mystery man. Like we we don't have your background. You are marked as a mystery man, and you're doing great. Like playing control decks, playing them well. So the question I always ask to people, being at this stage in Hearthstone in the final, is: Do you have any previous card game experience? Actually, I'm not. I always like like the card games, but I have never played Magic or anything. So no, the Hearthstone is the first one. So how did how did you get into Hearthstone, and wh and when did you get into Hearthstone? Actually, in, during the close beta, and I, as I said, I kind of liked uh, the card games, and I thought that when Blizzard is doing that, so it would be like really accessible to all the people. So I started it. So yeah. Did you play any esports before? Because you are um, you are not that stressed when you play. It, it seems like you're calm. You're making good decisions. So, did you have um, any experience with any other competitions before? Well, like I don't know. It was like 
12, 14 years ago, we played the Angel tournament with friends. <laughs> like it was a little bit competition, but it was mostly for fun as well. So, well, it's really. an, old, an old school esports background. Well, let's talk yeah. about that game. You, you went two games down early on against the Mech Shaman, mm -hmm. uh, and obviously you had to reverse all kill with Paladin. When you were saying it 2 0 down, and as Nim said, like we couldn't really read anything from your face all the way through those games. You know, Alchemix, we could kind of tell a little bit what he was thinking looking at him, but you were just very calm all the way through. How did you feel at that point when you knew you were going to have to win three games in a row to stay in it? I, I, I thought it's over. I thought I thought I am done, actually. So I was just thinking, okay, let's try. Whatever, we'll see. Most impressive, like you, you actually kept your calm and you were able through, to go through it. Um, yes. Coming That's back, what I was even... trying to do the most to stay calm because I yeah. was actually um, coming back even uh, before um, before the Alchemix game. You won versus Amaz. How did that feel? Yeah, it was it was really great because both our both our first two games. I won with the Warrior deck, and it was really close games. I was almost dead in both games, and I just got really lucky and got back in the game. So it was nice. Then we had like a one quite bad game with the Warrior versus Priest. I, to be honest, I didn't know what to do, so I was just waiting, and then of course it was the bad decision. And then with the Hunter, I got lucky in top decks, and I lost. Well, we're going to get let you go very soon and uh, prepare for the grand final. Obviously, that's coming up after our next semi-final. It's going to be a best of seven, so we're going to see even more decks from you. But uh, what do you think of our next semi-final? Ari versus Gara. Ari is another guy who, just like you, has come through the open qualifiers and has done really well, beat Kalento on his way to get here. And uh, Gara, probably the most well-known player left in this tournament right now. What do you make of those two players, and, and who would you look most like to face in the final? Actually, I'm not sure, because Ari already beat me in the groups. And he played really well. Actually, I yeah, shield slam without a shield to Ari. <laughs> so I'm kind of worried uh, to play Ari again. So actually, I would rather face Gara, I guess. But at this point, I don't know. Well, congratulations. Well, congratulations, Dale. As I say, we will see you a little bit later on in our grand final, but you're now guaranteed at least $1,000 in prize money, which is a pretty good show return for all the work that you've put in. But we'll see you later on, and we're going to get into our second semi-final just now. Mm -hmm. Thanks.